A very warm welcome everyone. We are all aware that Turkey was recently hit by a devastating earthquake of magnitude 7.8. But the thing remains, it was not a first. Turkey has been hit by severe earthquakes in the past few years. The thing remains, the tectonic activity going on in this region is exclusive. We find all types of plate margins being formed and differential motion of plate has resulted in a specific plate tectonic activity going on in this area. I'll just give you a brief concept about plate tectonics. Imagine you have a hot pot of milk. What happens when the pot of milk starts to cool down? A thin layer of fat starts depositing on its surface. Now, the earth behaves in a similar way. The lightest material of the earth forms its crust and the partially molten asthenosphere lies beneath it. We experience convection currents in the asthenosphere which results in motion of this thin topmost layer of the earth known as crust. Now because of this differential rate of motion, the surface of the earth known as crust is divided into different plates known as the major plates and a few minor plates. Now, if a minor plate is found stuck in between a few major plates, severe tectonic activity is resulted. Let's take an instance. This is Turkey. It is surrounded by the major plate Eurasian plate, the African plate and the minor plate Arabian plate. The Anatolian plate, which is another micro plate, is stuck in between. Now the thing remains, all the plates around it are moving in a different fashion. Let's understand this once. Let's understand this once. Now this is Africa. This is your Arabian plate. This is the Eurasian plate. Now note the different stresses being developed in this particular region we call Turkey. Let's play this again and understand. Africa, the African plate and the Arabian plate are moving northwards and the rigid Eurasian plate provides a very strong resistance to this upward motion. The thing remains that the Anatolian microplate is being compressed at one end and it is forced to move along the Mediterranean plate, right? So this causes severe differential rate of motion because of which a lot of stresses are developed in this microplate and differential rate of motion causes an expansion and elongation along its surface. Let's see the further consequences that result from this motion, right? So, like I mentioned, the, why do we call it the Anatolian plate? In Turkey, we find the Anatolian plateau and the name of this micro plate is based after that, right? So, let's study the different plates around this. Like I mentioned, the Eurasian plate is the major plate the first major plate around the Anatolian microplate, the next one being the Arabian plate and the African plate. Now, just going a little off topic, a differential rate of motion between the African plate and the Arabian plate is resulting in the Afar rift, which will form the new ocean known as the Afar ocean, right? So, we will save that topic from some time later, right? So, all these plates around the microplate are moving in a differential rate like the Arabian plate is just pushing and compressing this Anatolian plate against the Eurasian plate because of which it is forced to move westward. Nevertheless, the, the African plate is also moving northward. Now, let's understand one thing. The African plate consists of both the continental part and the oceanic part. The oceanic part of the continent of the African plate is nothing but the Mediterranean Sea, right? The oceanic crust is denser because of which when the Anatolian plate is moving over the African plate, the oceanic part of the African plate will subside under the Anatolian plate. Let's analyze this thing once. Let's understand this once. At this margin, the African plate, the oceanic part of the African plate is denser than the continental part of the Anatolian plate. 
because of which the denser plate starts to sink underneath the lighter plate. This is elementary plate tectonics. Now the thing is a certain specific feature is associated with the oceanic part of the African plate. What? It is exceptionally dense. It is exceptionally dense. So a different, a unique concept is in play in this area. Let's understand it once. Now, before I show you the animation, I'll just give you a brief concept. What is going here? Right. So imagine this is your African plate and the this one is your Anatolian plate. Right. So the denser plate is being subsided under the lighter one. Why? The continental plate is lighter, granitic. The oceanic part of the African plate is basaltic. It is denser. It will sink. Well, this is a normal subsidence boundary, right? A convergence zone plates. One plate is subsiding under the other. But the thing is, the African plate, the oceanic part of the African plate is a lot denser. What happens? As soon as subsidence begins, it melts and the thing is, it is so dense that it starts collapsing. It starts to sink. What happens is, both these plates are in contact, in this zone of contact, right? So, when this plate starts to sink, it pulls the Anatolian plate along with it. It pulls the Anatolian plate along with it. Imagine like this, the African plate is sinking, it falls. As soon as it falls, it pulls the Anatolian plate along with it. Meaning thereby, the Anatolian plate is being pulled along the African plate, but at the same time, the Arabian plate is pressing against it, meaning thereby the western part of the Anatolian plate is being stretched, which will result in fractures along the crust. And what do we call a fracture on the crust? A fault. Only when we experience a rate of motion against that fault. I'll explain it, right? Let's just view it once. So, like I mentioned, the denser oceanic part of the African plate is sinking under the continental part. Now, the thing is, it is so dense, as soon as it starts to, right, as soon as it starts to sink underneath the Anatolian plate, being exceptionally dense, it starts to collapse. As soon as it collapses, it just pulls the Anatolian plate along with it, resulting in fractures. And a fracture along which we find motion is known as a fault. If there is no motion associated with a fault, it is known as a joint. Now the thing is, because of this sinking of the African plate, it causes stretching of the western part of the Anatolian plate which results in fractures being developed all across this plate. Now, in a, we need to understand this thing, right? I'll explain after this. All right. This just simply pulls the plate along, right? And it causes an expansion in the Anatolian plate, which results in fractures being developed along the continental crust. Now, what are the consequences of this? What are the consequences? Let's understand it. Now imagine this is the denser African plate and this is the lighter Anatolian plate, the continental part. The thing is, as soon as it starts to descend, it being so dense, it being so dense, it simply falls. It simply falls. And these two plates are interacting with each other. The continental crust was in touch with this part, right? The continental crust was in touch with this part. As soon as it falls, the crust is pulled along with it. The crust is pulled along with it. Now, what results from this? What results from this? The Anatolian plate is being pulled from one side because of this action and it is being compressed by the Arabian plate and it is pressed against the Eurasian plate, meaning thereby 
this crust is being stretched because of which because of which cracks develop on its surface because of which cracks develop on its surface now differential motion against these cracks leads to the formation of a normal fault what is a normal fault let's understand this once imagine i'm drawing a cross section view of the crust a cross section is a side view like this right now this stretching on one end and compression on one end causes a stretching to take place meaning thereby cracks will develop along the surface cracks will develop different in different shapes now what will happen when they are pulled what happens when it is pulled imagine this as a ramp imagine this as a ramp when this part is pulled it will simply slide underneath the remaining part it will simply slide underneath it right this it forms a ramp and as soon as it is pulled it simply slides underneath this continental part and it results in an earthquake why because initially the plates were held together as soon as the stretching takes place the crust which was separated because of the fault simply slides down along this fault and this results in an earthquake so the earthquakes being experienced in turkey are not exactly because of a zone of subsidence but it is because of a normal fault and there are numerous such faults in this place and these result in strong earthquakes as we have just seen in the animation and videos that there are hundreds of such fault differential motion is being experienced along all of them and the resultant earthquakes are because of a normal fault so that is all that you need to know regarding the unique plate tectonic activity going around in turkey thank you so much stay tuned for further information